You're with us here on Midcap Radar. The market is up about eight odd points, and uh, I mean it's been that way for a while now. Eleven thousand and forty-three. Uh, the Bank Nifty actually has uh, done even better. Uh, I mean, so when I say even, I mean as compared to say two hours ago, uh, the Nifty was flat. Bank Nifty was up about zero point four. It's up zero point eight percent. So financials uh, is what is really doing well at uh, this point in time. Uh, I mean, all kinds of names, actually, and we'll come to some specifics in a bit. But ICICI Bank is one which stands out with nearly 3% gains. So, with me, my colleague, Anisha. Hi, Anisha. Hi, Prashant. Good afternoon. Well, yes, you mentioned that the banking space is doing well, but one stock from the banking space which is not doing well is Yes Bank. So, pull up Yes Bank's chart after the big rally that we saw yesterday. That one is losing a bit of steam, down about 5%. And to add to that, in the last few minutes, we have seen some decline in the power utility names. So, names like NTPC and Power Grid are coming under a bit of pressure. So, we'll watch out for all of these stocks. But first up, let's run you through the top headlines. Market opens higher on positive global queues, but gives up early gains. The Sensex and the Nifty trade flat. Banks outperform yet again. Asian markets trade mostly higher on positive cues from easing trade tensions between US and China. All eyes are also on the ECB, that's the European Central Bank, which meets today where investors expect a significant easing package. Housing finance companies like Repco India Bulls Housing and HDFC gain today on hopes of a package from the government on affordable homes. Apollo Hospitals is in focus as promoters move closer to unpledging shares, while SPI Life is under pressure as promoter State Bank of India sells 4.5% stake via uh, an offer for sale. Okay, so those are essentially headlines that we are tracking right now. Uh, the market's up 7 points on the Nifty. Himanshu Gupta of Globe Capital is with us for a quick technical check on things. Uh, Himanshu, thanks for your time. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, so 11,042, first, uh, your thoughts directionally on the Nifty? Uh, good afternoon, Prashan. Uh, well, despite of uh, no follow-up through buying seeing the markets, I think the markets are holding on nicely. And the declines that we have seen since morning are being bought into. So my sense is that one can still go long on declines around 11,020, 11,025. And I can, I can see that the markets are likely to test 11,100 levels in the immediate short term. Uh, well, I would suggest a stop loss below 10,960-970 on the Nifty spot. Uh, talking about the bank Nifty, I think uh, again the markets are looking strong here. To, uh, one can initiate and hold on to the long positions with a stop loss below 27,850. I think 28,200-28,250 is an intraday target that we can expect. Okay, Himanshu, so go long on the market still, that is the advice. But in terms of stock specific action, what are you strategizing? Well, I have two buy recommendations. The first one is a buy on HDFC Bank. Uh, the stock has given a strong breakout today, uh, so one can initiate long positions around current price, uh, keep a stop loss below 22.64, and uh, we can expect target of 23.20, 23.30 in today's session itself. Uh, the second call is a buy on Ultratech Cements. Uh, one can initiate long positions here, keep a stop loss below 3.970, and I think one can see targets of 41.20 in the immediate short term. Okay. Any other uh, banks uh, slash financials which are looking good? I think most of the financials are looking good. I think Kotak Bank is again a stock that's looking uh, good and I think we can see some follow-up buying coming in both for Axis Bank and for Kotak Bank. So I think all in all the bank nifty is likely to perform better and I think 28,200, 28,250 is something that we can eye upon in today's weekly expiry. Okay, so 28,250 lightly on the bank nifty. Thank you, Manj, for joining us with all of that. But let's move on and getting some fundamental opinion now. Earlier today, we spoke with Sanjay Dutt of Quantum Securities to understand what he makes of the market and the PSU banks. Take a look at that conversation. What we're seeing is a rebound from an extreme oversold condition, particularly in the small and mid cap space. Uh, they've been uh, beaten down whatever beyond what was necessary, beyond what the fundamentals justified. There was extreme pessimism, so we've seen some of that uh, correcting a little. What the government is doing and what steps they've taken right now are more short-term steps, but fundamental changes, the way PSUs lend and the way PSUs are looked at, of course, leaving aside the governance debate, which of course Lata and I can discuss for hours together, Leaving aside that debate of how PSU banks would be run, I think there are radical changes that are happening in the banking system.
there is definitely a disconnect and of course a lot of people turn around and say like NPS governance and you know everything is everything is kind of pathetic at PSU Bank so why should I be tempted to invest but obviously it still can't trade at you know 120th to 115th of HDFC Bank it has to get re-rated governance and all those issues will follow government realizes that you know everyone realizes that so I think that's where the opportunity is you got to make sure where you want to be now to position yourself and also your risk reward framework are you looking at something 20 25 percent return per annum or are you looking at a 3x 4x in the next two years okay uh, Sanjay Dutt uh, with his thoughts on the market uh, some uh, alerts coming in uh, the uh, rupee is extended gains uh, so 71.28 now on the uh, uh, dollar rupee rate at this point in time uh, Sun Pharma is something which is also at the day's high. It's up about two and a half or percent. India Bulls, of course, has been up for a while, five and a half. I think it's extended gains by a bit more. Okay, the big one today uh, to watch from a global perspective is going to be the ECB meeting. Uh, by the way, markets are expecting some significant easing uh, from the ECB. Elvin de Groot is head of macro strategy at Rabobank, and he's joining us right now uh, to tell us what we should expect. Uh, uh, Elvin, thanks for joining us. Uh, so am I correct in so, saying that right. uh, markets are expecting significant easing or like the yeah, ECB it's, itself, which seems a bit divided, uh, the market opinion is also split? Yes, indeed. Yeah. Um, uh, to, uh, to start with uh, our expectations, yes, indeed, we expect uh, considerable easing uh, measures by the ECB. We expect a, a 10 basis point rate cut in the deposit uh, rate, facility rate. Uh, we expect that to be, uh, uh, um, to be also uh, announced with a form of tiering uh, to offset some of the, the negative impact of that rate cut on the banking system. Uh, but on top of that, we also expect the ECB to strengthen its forward guidance and uh, to restart their, their quantitative easing uh, program. Uh, by announcing uh, around 40 billion a month of uh, additional net asset purchases. Uh, so that's, that's quite a bit. Now, if you look at what the market is expecting, uh, you could say that the market is actually a bit more aggressive in its expectations on, on, on rates. So uh, the average expectation in the market is around a 15 basis point rate cut. Uh, I think that's quite unlikely. So they would either do minus 10 or minus 20. But again, uh, that, that kind of shows you that the market is expecting a little bit more there. Uh, on the other hand, the market is less convinced uh, of, uh, of QE, uh, or, or certainly I would say the, the pace uh, of, of uh, renewed uh, QE. And so that's more like a, a, the ballpark figure of 30 billion a month. So the market is still expecting QE. So overall, expectations are high indeed. And that's partly because uh, Mr. Draghi himself, ECB president, has been, uh, uh, especially during the summer months and, and uh, 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 before the summer already, uh, you know, he has created those uh, expectations. Uh, and, and now, you know, there, we, we see some, some we, we've had a few governing council members coming out in, in recent weeks uh, suggesting that, that maybe there is indeed more, let's say, division within the council uh, about, especially about restarting QE. I think that's, that's the, going to be the key point today. Well, absolutely, Elvin. So you're expecting a 10 bips cut when it comes to the rates and a 40 billion per month, uh, your 40 billion euro per month kind of asset purchases. But going forward, what do you expect for the rest of the year in terms of the rate uh, movement? And as far as the comments are concerned, what are you watching out for from, let's say, Mario Draghi this time? Mm -hmm. Well, um, I think 10 basis point is only the start. The, the mm -hmm. start. Uh, because uh, especially if you announce a tiering system where you uh, where you soften the impact on the banking system, you only do that. Uh, it's kind of a complex uh, 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 solution. So you only do that when you have more rate cuts in mind. And that's one of the reasons why we expect the ECB to continue re cutting rates uh, going further in uh, down in December of this year. And then also two more rate cuts in the first half of next year. So taking the ECB the deposit rate uh, to minus 80 basis points so that that's that's quite aggressive um, I, I would say but still I think uh, that it, it can be defended uh, now today um, uh, you know I, I think uh, as you already alluded to the market is uh, has quite high expectations there um, and so 
what they will have to do is, especially because there may be a little bit more division in the council than than, than we thought before, uh, is how to deal with that. Because if they, for example, if they announce a, a, a much smaller QE program, that could have significant impact on on the market. Um, uh, for example, as uh, if, if, if they believe that they, they can't do uh, 40 or even 30 billion because they need to adjust uh, certain parameters and, and, and that's quite, you know, politically a little bit sensitive, um, uh, that could have qu- quite an impact on the market. Another thing uh, we need to watch is, is the tiering system because also the choice for the tiering system uh, could have uh, significant oh, right. impact Elvin, uh, Elvin, on they, other, other yeah, markets. Yeah. Yeah. Could you, uh, Elvin, briefly, could you explain what is this uh, tiering system? Yeah, so the, 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 in the tiering system, what they will do is they will probably raise the amount of excess reserves uh, that banks hold that are exempt from the, 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 the current deposit rate. And that means that because now there's a lot of excess liquidity in the financial system, uh, there's about uh, 1,700 billion of euros of excess liquidity in the system, and that's being punished by the, the deposit rate of minus 40 basis points. So if you take that down to minus 50 or even to minus 80, as we expect next year, uh, then that is a, a kind of a, a cost for those banks who hold a lot of excess liquidity. Hmm. Now, if you increase, let's say, the level at which that excess liquidity is no longer punished at the, the going deposit rate, but is, is uh, uh, falls under the, uh, let's say, the, the zero rate regime, then you kind of offset the cost of the the excess excess liquidity. So, um, in in that way, they can make it. Let's say uh, the, the the near term impact of the banks could be more or less offset by by such a tiering okay. system. But it's quite it's a bit complicated. So mm. it could have also impact on other markets, such as the market for short term uh, bonds, for example. Mm. Uh, just one last question. I mean, if uh, the if yeah. the, the uh, final outcome is perceived to be very significant, uh, do mm-hmm. you think that uh, we will have a, a broad rally in risk assets, including uh, equities? Well, I think uh, I think if, if they do what what we are expecting, then I, I, that w- would really support the market indeed, and would also be beneficial for risk assets. Um, I think it's it's uh, a little bit far-fetched already to expect the ECB to start thinking about buying equities as well. Mm. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, if they if they do such a uh, comprehensive easing program, that would uh, that would likely support market sentiment and, and 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 therefore also be beneficial for for risky assets. Having said that, you know if they really disappoint the market. Uh, and given that expectations are already quite high, uh, then we could also see uh, quite a s- significant sell-off in uh, in bonds, uh, and and that could also have a, a negative impact on, on risky assets. So in that sense, I would say, uh, you know, everybody is braced for quite a bit of volatility uh, today. Okay, Alvin, thank you so much for joining us with what to expect from ECB today. So perhaps significant measures is what is in from the ECB. We'll watch out for what really happens there. But uh, let's time now to slip into a short break. But as we do that, here's a look at the top stories on Money Control Project.